In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a template. The template we're going to set up is for electronic instruments, and we're going to set it up so that we can use it and access it quickly. Now, here's my startup window for Pro Tools. I'm going to save it as a 44.1 32-bit and click OK. This is a blank session. And we're going to go in here. I've already created one, but let's do something a little different. So we'll call this one a virtual instrument. We get the blank Pro Tools window here. Let's go ahead and start setting up some tracks. So I'm going to hit Shift Command N. That's going to bring up my new tracks. I'm going to create stereo instrument. Let's do five of those. And then I'm going to add 12 uh, MIDI tracks. And then let's add five stereo auxiliary tracks. And then I'm going to add some template tracks that I've saved for stems and also for mix down. And if you're watching one of my other videos, I show you how to set these up. If you have questions, just leave a comment below and I'll try to help you out with setting these kind of template tracks up. But let's click create. And now we have all our tracks ready. On the instruments here, let's go down and choose Expand 2. This is the software sampler that comes with Pro Tools. And I'm just going to hold down the Option key and click and drag, click and drag, click and drag. So now we have four instances of Expand. And I'm going to add Vacuum so that we have something that we can use as a arpeggiated synth. And we'll start with the spider. And then on expand here, I'm gonna set up one for drums. So I'll go to percussion, bass tom and timpani. On this one, let's set up an action pad. I like the evolution pad to start with. And you can choose any preset that you want to start with and then customize it to get your own sound. I'm gonna show you here with some of the effect sends what we can do. Uh, let's see, this is the third one. Let's throw in some strings. Uh, I'm gonna do the harp plush strings. And the fourth one here, let's do some effects. So now we have these tracks set up. Uh, let's relabel them. Uh, so this is drums. And I like to take these and color them up as I go along. So just double clicking on the color bar at the top or bottom will bring up this little window here. And if you click none, it'll make it black. I'm gonna color these guys up dark green. And then I'm gonna do all the MIDI tracks a blue color. And then I'm going to do the auxiliary tracks, a lighter blue color. And we'll get into those in a second. For right now, let's take the first three MIDI tracks and let's move them over next to the drums. And let's take the next three MIDI tracks and move them over next to the synth. And the next three MIDI tracks over next to the strings. And the final three MIDI tracks next to effects. And what we're using these MIDI tracks for is expand gives you four banks, and if the bank is set to one, it's going to read off of channel one. So we can actually set it to read off channel two, channel three, and channel four. And you can set these up to trigger any way you want. And now we're gonna move, so see where it says MIDI note expand to one. I'm gonna go to expand to one and make this channel two. So now this MIDI channel is going to respond to this channel corresponding here on expand. Let's move this over to channel three and channel four, and so on down the line. 
Okay, so now I have done that for all the groups of the MIDI's channels, and I've taken them and so labeled them accordingly to what they correspond with, with the expand, and the one that they're sending the information to. And now I'm going to rename them. The best way to do this is to hold down shift, click on one, and then click on the last one that you want, and then hold down command and remove the tracks you don't want to rename. And then right click, rename. And since this is one dash two, so this is expand one channel two, and then this is one dash three and one dash four. The next one is going to be 2 2, 2 3, 2 4. So this way I can easily look down, and also while we're recording, the MIDI region will have the corresponding number so that you know which one it's appropriated to. Now you don't have to set these all up, and you don't have to make them all. You can actually have, say, you have this evolution trigger here, you can actually add another sample. Uh, if we go into effects and we add time fluctum, that will also now trigger off channel one. Now, if I want to have independent control of the MIDI notes coming out of this module, I would have to change this to either two, three, or four. And you can change them to any one you want just by clicking on this little arrow here. And then you can turn off the patches by clicking this. And we'll get into expand a little bit later. Uh, I actually have a video up that shows you some of the techniques for expand. This is a very, very powerful tool to use in Pro Tools. So now we have these set up, and let's go over here now and focus on the auxiliary tracks that we set up. Now, first thing I'm gonna do is I have stems over here, and if you're not doing stem mixing, then this really doesn't apply to you, so you can jump ahead in the video but you should pay attention to doing this at some point in your career. It will make you a better mixing engineer. So I have the stems already set up and I've already routed them through my buses. And so what I'm gonna do is go up to Setup, I.O. And I'm gonna click on the bus tab up here. And on the bus tab, I've actually already set up my sends, my bus sends. Normally what it'll say right here, I think I have a few down here, right? that say bus one and two, bus three and four. So you can rename these anything you want just by double clicking and then rename it to bus one dash two. I'm just gonna keep it that. But you can name it whatever you want. You see how I created a quarter, an eighth, a sixteenth, a reflection verb, verb one, trash is a plugin that I'm gonna set up. So you can set them up in any way you want and these are the effects that you're going to use and send to when you have your channel set up. So I'm going to go right here to the input on the first one and I'm going to set it to the quarter. And now I'm going to go and get a delay plugin. I like the Waves H delay to start with. And I've already got a quarter note set up. And I'm going to make sure that this is a quarter note delay. So now that corresponds with the send and the delay. Uh, what I'm gonna do next is pretty obvious then. I'm gonna go to the bus, I'm gonna click the eighth. I'm gonna hold down option, move this over. And now I'm gonna move this up to an eighth note. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna slide this over. And I'm gonna move this up to a sixteenth. And I'm gonna send the bus to the sixteenth. Now I want a reflection verb, so I'm gonna go into my reverbs. I'm gonna grab this T-Rex Classic Studio Reverb plugin. And the last one here is gonna be the Isotope Trash. I'm gonna go into Harmonic and under Isotope Trash 2. And I'm gonna bring up the Nasty Boy. And then we got to go here and make sure that we assign these to the reflection verb and this to the trash send. And now I'm going to take these five tracks and I'm going to hold shift and option. And I'm going to change the track send to stem eight. This is the stem where I want all my effects going. And then you see it says effect stem and that corresponds over here with the effect stem. And then I'm also gonna do this now for the vacuum. I'm gonna send the vacuum out to stem six, which is my keys stem. And then I'm gonna click on one of the effects for the 
expand tracks. I'm gonna hold down Command. I'm gonna click on Strings, Synth, and Drums. These are the tracks that actually have the expand plugins on them. Now I'm gonna hold Shift Option again, and I'm gonna output these to Stem 1. And see how they all changed to their corresponding stem over here, which is the drum stem. So now we have this all set up. I want to start assigning the auxiliary tracks, so I'm gonna change this to, say, quarter, actually. And this one's gonna be eighth. Click this to rename them. This one's 16th. This one is the reflection verb. And this one's trash. And now we have those labeled. I'm going to go back here and click on drums, hold down command, synth, strings, effects, and vacuum. And now I'm gonna hold down shift and option. And on the first send input here, I'm gonna go down to track and I'm gonna have it send to the quarter. And you can see it's gonna apply this send to all the tracks. So I'm gonna do the same for the eighth. I'm going to do the same for 16th. I'm going to do the same for the reflection verb. And also the trash. Now I've set up my sends to automatically default to zero. So they're sending full volume. So I'm going to hold down option command to mute all the sends right now. Now that we have that set up, I like to set up some window configurations so that I can see those tracks quickly. Now, if you have Pro Tools 11 or 12, you can actually do the sends independently. If you have Pro Tools 10 or lower, you can't. And so since I'm working in 10 HD, I have to set up, say, a window configuration so that I can see the individual send faders. You can also do this if you're in 11 and 12. It is a handy feature. So what I'm gonna do is click on the first one, click this little red dot right here, click on the second one, and then slide this over. And there we've got the quarter notes. Let's start with the eighth notes. Let's bring those in. I usually put a little bit of a gap between them so that I can recognize that this is a subgroup of the quarters, this is the eighth. And we turn this off. And so forth. Okay, so now I have set up the send groups faders for each of the quarters the eighth notes and the 16th note delays. So I wanna be able to bring this window up without having to reorganize these faders every time. A really fast way to do that is to go to Window, Configurations, New Configuration. I'm gonna just leave it number one and I'm gonna call this the Delay Send Faders. And click OK. And now I could hide everything if I want, and just on the numeric part of my keypad, if I hit period, one, star, it's going to bring all of my faders back. If you don't want to do, do it that way with the key command, you can actually go to Window, Configurations, and look at the Window Configuration list, which is also Option Command J. And that brings up this little window, which if you're familiar with the memory locations, which is Command 5, so this window, if you're familiar with this one, this one's also very, very similar. So we could hide everything, and then Option Command J, and then click on Delay Send Faders, and voila, there we have everything right back where it was, and we don't have to hunt and peck for them. And then we can hide them real quick, and then we can bring them back just as fast as bringing Option Command J, clicking on Delay Send Faders. So I'm gonna set this up for the next group, which is the reflection and the trash. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to leave this group just the way it is in case I possibly wanna change something there. Quarter notes are usually the most important delay. But here you see where it says send B. I'm gonna click that and just go down to send D. And it's automatically going to switch to the reflection verb control. And this way I don't have to click on anything too extensive, it's just one minor change. And then on this group, I'm gonna change this to the trash. And that's a fast way to move that. And now we have these two groups are added. So I'm gonna go back up to Window, Configurations, New Configuration, 
And number two is going to be the reflection verb plus trash. And I'm going to click OK. And so now period one star brings up the delays and period two star brings up the reflection verb and trash. Now I can access these verbs quickly and easily to change sends, adjust panning if I want to send them pre or post fader. All those controls are now right at the quick touch of the fingers. I'm going to save that and I am going to close all these windows. And now that we have these still selected, these five, I'm actually going to group them as the V instruments. And I'm going to move them down to V. And I'm going to check the globals. And I like to have the inserts on bypass if I want to bypass them real quick. And also I like to have control of the volume and the mute and automation and solos. Uh, I usually uncheck the record enable. Now if you're working in Pro Tools, you might not have as much of control as Pro Tools and Pro Tools HD do have different variances. However, you no longer need Pro Tools HD hardware to run Pro Tools HD software. You can actually purchase the software and run it with any device. So you can click OK. And now we have these grouped so that if I mute one, they all mute. And that's a quick and easy way. If you're going to add some more instruments, this is your core group. You can always add more to it. And I'm also going to do that for this group right here. Command G. And I'm going to call this the box sends. And I'm just going to leave it A. And we click OK. And so now we have this all set up. And then this is my mix down channels which for right now I'm going to make inactive so that I'm not thinking about them so I can listen to what I'm working on before I actually get to mix down. And now we have the windows set up for our faders and we have our groups set up and we have all our sends set up. And I've bypassed everything so as we're going along you just hold down command and you can click on them and that'll unmute the tracks. Now since I have the groups set up, they're going to unmute everything. Yeah, if you want that to stop, you go over to your groups here and you click aux sends or if you have this enabled, you can just hit the letter A and it turns it on and off. And you can also hit the letter V and that'll turn off the virtual instruments and now when I click this, it's just going to unmute the one channel. So you can work at one channel at a time or you can work with the whole group. That's up to you. And I hope this really helped you out. Let me show you real quick how to save this now. You go to File and Save as Template. Now I've created my own folder. I highly recommend that you do that. You can literally just go in here and click Add Category and then name it your initials or your band name or your producer name, whatever you want. And then give it a name. Usually it's the same as the session name, but you can change that if you want. I like naming my session what I'm going to name the template. It makes it easy. And then you click OK. Now I'm going to close this. And I'm going to go File, New Session. And here's the folder from Create Session from Template. Usually it'll be on this, just blank. You click Create Session from Template. Navigate to your new folder. And then find your virtual instrument template. You can do this for any any project. If you want to set it up so that it's easy to recall your system, your board, you can do this with any other tracks the same way that I just set this uh, session up. Choose it, click OK. It's going to ask you to name it. We'll just call this Beat 1. Save it in my folder. And there we go. We're ready to start recording. We don't have to bring up any of the instruments. And if you wanted to change things, literally, it's just a matter of a click here and choosing a new patch. So you've already got your expands set up. You've already got your faders, your MIDI. Everything is set up and ready to go. Thanks for watching. Please leave any comments or questions below. This is David from Shine On Studio in Oakland, California. Thanks for watching.